Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Code Geass Season 1 uh, from Manga Entertainment. And I've got to admit, this is an anime that I don't normally watch as in the genre, but it's such a good one at the same time. So before we jump into it, if you like this sort of content, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button as well, that cheeky notification bell to be notified when more videos drop. Without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. Code Geass is an anime that is really interesting but it's also one of those animes that makes you want to watch over and over again so as soon as one episode is complete you want to watch the next one straight away and i kind of like that quite a bit it's got quite a lot of darkness to it but it's also got a bit of kind of lightness to it so it's kind of a nice balance code gears is an anime that basically says what if the british empire took over japan as well as their domination across the world the main character Leluge, is gifted the power of mind control called a Geass. So basically he would look at you, activate his power and tell you a command or a suggestion and you would follow it. And you see this happen multiple times, but there is a drawback and it can only be used once. Lelouch is an amazing strategist. So he is able to formulate plans, know exactly what the enemy is thinking, and then obviously use that to help the rebels. And you see that kind of thing in episode one, maybe episode two where he starts like kind of saying, you need to do this, follow this, hit, go here, you'll do it. So effectively, it's like a game of chess. And I found this interesting because it's a war anime and I don't normally watch a lot of war animes. Now, mainly every single anime mainly happens in a school. And this is where the kind of comedy and lightness kind of mixes with the dark. So obviously Lelouch and his friends are all at the high school and obviously he'll like disappear at times. He looks after his little sister who is blind and you kind of like see all this over time um, because obviously the backstory kind of happens. Um, Lelouch is a kind of prince. He has got this power, but then is kind of banished. Uh, because he wants to know what happens to the death of his mother. So basically he wants to find out what's going on with that. This anime has so many really amazing scenes. Some of my favorites is uh, when Lelouch wants to save his friend. Um, his friend has been kind of put on uh, trial and is uh, done for murder. And they, they kind of formulate this whole plan of driving up this emperor's car that has been looked like it because Lelouch killed him earlier on. And when he gets up to this general, he turns around and uh, he admits that there's going to be this bomb that he knew about it. And he gives him the nickname Orange. And oh my God, it's so fun in a way, because when he stands there, he, he tells the uh, general Orange, I can't remember his name, but he turns around and says, you will let us go with him um, and you will do everything in your power to make us get away. And when it activates, you know, he says, like, let them go. And everyone tries to stop Lelouch. But then the general kind of just jumps in and, like, does all this sort of thing to make them escape. Using his mech to kind of, like, fight the others. Oh, the scene was absolutely amazing. And it's, it's interesting to see that Lelouch has this power and is able to say something like that when Orange is completely and utterly loyal to the British Empire. Uh, it's, it's so much fun. On the first disc alone, there is so many heartful moments, mainly when you see Lelouch and Kirigiri, um, or Kirigari, sorry if I got his name wrong, but the way that their friendship works, the way that there's integration into the school as well. Um, I think one of my favorite episodes is when Lelouch has this mask, um, which obviously is his persona, uh, which is Zero, and this cat that is mainly in this anime kind of steals the helmet and rushes around school. And they turn around and make this into a game. They say whoever wins this will get a kiss from the kind of the faculty team, the, like the, the main presidential team. And the entire school has a lot of fun with it. Uh, and they try and catch this cat. And the way that you see Lelouch and Kurogagi is just absolutely like kind of fun. It, it's something that kind of breaks up. And I kind of really wish there were more episodes like this all the way through. And even at the very end of the anime um, of season one, when Lelouch is against Karagiri, you can see that they don't fight each other, but you know, it's like, come on, like, you know, you want to. And the friendship is still there, even though they are mortal enemies of the personas. And it's just so 
It's such an interesting in-depth kind of like friendship between them that I like. Now the animation to me is really weird, mainly because it's just, they're all really long characters, like their legs are super long or the arms are super long at different times. And this to me doesn't kind of ruin it because I really like the art style, but I'm also kind of weirded out just by how long the legs are. Uh, all the characters are very elegant and that's what I generally really like in this. And it just seems like it's just, it's really well drawn. At times I kind of felt like it wanted to be an 80s and 90s uh, type of uh, anime. So it, uh, like a little point when I think it's Kurigami, he's off with the princess. And you see the sort of style of animation that kind of reminded me of animes such as like Raujan Z and Project Aiko. Now one thing I did find is this anime is kind of serious most of the time. Uh, they do, as I said, have some heartfelt moments and some comedy moments, but this anime felt like it's pretty much like a dark toned anime all the way through, which is nice because there isn't any kind of like woo 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 or you know, something really weird that kind of stands out. And this is kind of a major uh, like breath of fresh air. For season two, I don't know if it's exactly the same, but for season one, it was just a nice kind of step back from the normal stuff of like magical uh, comedy and stuff like that. And I really enjoyed that. So this is an anime that I would recommend if you want to take a break from the kind of silliness that we normally see in all of the other animes. Now the color to me was absolutely amazing in this. The tone of the animation, it didn't feel like it was overexposed or certain parts were kind of like hugely, hugely done, uh, like, you know, over the top to kind of make you go, ah. So everything like that really made it for me. With all of this, it does have a serious tone. And as I mentioned before, it doesn't kind of overstep things. And this is what I think I generally really liked about it. And it made it stand out even more to me. There are two main other things that we see Lelouch do. One is where he kind of tells a girl to come to a part of the school to write or kind of uh, carve uh, a marking into the wall because he wanted to test out his power and he didn't want to do it too much. And you kind of see this all the way through the anime, um, or maybe a, a kind of part, shall I say. So you see it at first when he's talking to C2, and then he goes like, oh, I, I want to see what the gears was like, so I tested this out myself. And you see her coming back. So when major things happen at school, there'll be a kind of a cut clip to her kind of marking on the wall, and I just thought this was kind of cool. One thing I was told when I attended college and um, this is when I first heard about it, I'm guessing this would be the manga, was that Lelouch's uh, power goes crazy and it doesn't turn off. So he has a meeting with um, Umilia, uh, Euphelia, and I hope I got a name right. I'm sorry if I didn't. And he's talking to her. They obviously know who each other are and they don't kind of rat each other out or she doesn't rat him out. So he basically, like, he takes her away. It looks like he's going to kill her. Um, but they end up having a conversation themselves. But what he does is he turns to her, doesn't know his gear is on, and he says, um, he says like, oh, you, um, you know, it's funny how you would, uh, like, you're saying that you wouldn't do anything I say. I could tell you right now, you would go kill every single Japanese person, regardless of what mood you're in. And, you know, he doesn't notice, and she goes like, what? And you can see it, the, the gears like working on her, and she tries to fight it. And you know, it looks like it's gonna drive her mad. And I thought, oh my God, she's gonna go crazy. But then she kind of accepts it and goes, yeah, yeah, you're right. Goes out and tells everyone what she's gonna do. And oh my God, it was, it's one of those moments where you're just going like, oh, what's gonna happen? And I think it kind of cuts to this, like to the next episode. So you're like, I have to watch the next one. But the way it goes on and she just keeps doing it. Oh, it is something insane. But when she meets Kurigami later on, you know, she has to fight it because she's like, oh, you're Japanese, aren't you? And she's about to, but she's like, no, and she fights it and kind of breaks it. But unfortunately, because her body has been um, attacked and she's been shot at, you know, obviously uh, she passes on. And it's just seeing that where she was fighting it to like to the end. It is just a scene that I didn't expect. And I was like, oh, Oh dear God. But the emotion that Kirigami has, oh, just, it is just pure anger and passion and love that he's lost the love of his life and he just goes berserk. And I was like, oh, this is adding to it. Oh, this isn't just a thing where he's like, okay, I'll leave it. He's like, no, and oh, it's just so cool the way he takes down 
all these people of the resistance and he just doesn't care to me it was a great scene and i was just like oh this is what i love seeing this is what made me want to keep watching over and over again as the anime progresses you do see the uprising of the japanese people taking over and not just kind of take like lying still and taking it and that's what i generally really liked because it would feel like if they didn't it would just be all for nothing so obviously uh zero or lelouch has to change his tactics and goes like well you know i was going to team up with this person um but now you know we have to take it and he has to kind of really quickly think of his plan and that i actually kind of respected because it was a massive curveball for him and sometimes i think he doesn't deal well with change and that's what i kind of noticed in one of the scenes coming up um, i was absolutely shocked and i completely forgotten about this because i have actually seen code gear season one um was this whole like tectonic plate that they've got so japan has built to kind of like go against earthquakes this kind of like plate so when earthquakes go off the plates move there's a scene where you've got the entire kind of forces against zero so you've got the enemy forces and they've got tons of mechs about but at a certain point all the people that work on the plates actually just disable them quickly so they all fall and seeing that scene to me was like oh my god what i as i said i completely forgot about it so when all these people are kind of working on it you just see the crumble and i'm like dear god that's a great way of doing it that is amazing i uh, it's one plan that I really like Zero thinking about, going, this is what's gonna benefit me and this is how we're gonna win. And because everyone is like kind of like disabled and kind of like going like, oh, what are we doing? Like they're, they're disorientated, boom, it was easy enough for Zero to kind of go straight in. And I absolutely adored it. It was one of the best, like one of the best scenes in the anime. To me, the anime felt like it was a game of chess. Constantly all the time, uh, pieces were moved, things were done in such a way that it felt like a chess game. And you see this at the very beginning because Lelouch actually sorts it out uh, before he becomes zero. And then later on he's like, yes, I'll place this here, you know, this will work. And it just felt like all the play pieces just moved in together. And at times you thought that uh, zero would win all of it. Like there was times where you're like, mm, okay, I know how to do this. I know how to do this. I know how to move these people here. And this is how I'm going to win. And I generally thought, Dear God, you're really good. So this entire thing felt like it was a game of chess to me. Now, as Zero as a character, I generally do like him, but I felt at times he used his powers wrong. So at times he would literally get information from someone and go, you will tell me all this information and, you know, 100%. And they would. And then it'd be like, well, this works one time only, so wouldn't you want something different? If it were me, I would make them 100% loyal to me that they couldn't, like disobey any orders and then i'd be like so tell me about this information and then obviously they would but then i would put this into a thing where i would put more pawns so can you imagine like having like the entire army doing their daily route everyone at the very end against the main bad guy or a general that i don't like and they instantly turn and go we've done it i think that would have been a better use of the power but from where Zero and Lelouch, or Lelouch uses it, I felt at times he used it wise, and at the time he didn't. The anime to me ends on a massive cliffhanger. Uh, when I first watched this, I was like, when's the next episode? Oh, it'll be out next week. It wasn't, and this really got to me. I felt like there could have been one more episode to explain it, to end it all off, um, but now I'm kind of so excited that there is a season two, which a review will be coming very soon. But I generally really was just like, wow, like I, I was so invested and I've never, I don't normally get invested in a lot of animes. This one held my attention. It made me want to go, yes, I need to know more now. And I was just so happy with it. So yeah, it just leaves on a massive cliffhanger. And I was just like, why would you do this? No. <laughs> My thoughts on this anime is I generally don't normally watch a lot of war animes. They don't kind of really interest me, but this one I decided to try way back when and go, do you know what, I'll give this a go. It's been recommended to me and I really enjoyed it. So kind of reliving some of the memories. I really enjoyed it. I think it, it was great. I do like the art style, but at times at camera angles that they've done or where they've done any animation, the body just seems too long or it looks just weird. But I love the facial animation that, um, and the, the way it's drawn. I think it's, it's really nice. 
And I really like the way Lelouch at times, like he's like, hey, how are you doing? Then suddenly dead, dead, stern. And you know, he does this whole like kind of face thing. I really just, I think, hand over the face. I, I thought it was generally really good. I generally do like this. I just think the animation, I'm hoping in the second season, it may still stay the same or they slightly change it a bit but I do think that this is kind of cool. The story had many twists and turns, plot twists that I didn't see originally, and then we watching, it's like, oh my God, I didn't notice that. I generally think this is really cool. I am a big, massive fan of this anime now. Uh, I just love the plot twists. I love the storyline. I love the fact that the, the main hero or the protagonist of Zero, he isn't this some sort of kind of almighty powerful being he makes a little bit of mistakes in the anime or he doesn't realize his power is 100 percent turned up like turned on all the time and the way that he changes his friends especially like euphelia that one i think is a scene that stands out the most you know just the way that he like he breaks down for what he's done he knows what he's done wrong but he's like dear god i didn't mean for this and he has to quickly adapt and oh my god it's just that sort of emotion to me, I felt really like excited about it. I was like, oh my God, this person can fall. This person isn't this high mighty like, God type character. He has flaws and I love it. I've seen like some animes where the main characters don't have flaws and it really irritates me, but having this one is perfect. Such a good anime, literally go and watch it. Now, obviously this does have politics, war and everything in the anime. And I think that if the anime is normally about that, that's fine, not adding it in much later on, which we've seen fun animation do previously. But this anime has definitely got politics in it. It's basically war. It's interesting to watch. So if you're into politics, as I've said multiple times, war and all that, this anime is definitely for you. And even if you're kind of like, mm, give it a go. I did, I absolutely loved it. And I watch a ton of anime. And this one just literally just blew my mind. So what do you think about this? Have you seen this anime? Have you read the manga? What are your thoughts? Let me know down below in the comments. So where to buy it will be in the description down below. I highly recommend that you check it out. Have a look online, look at trailers. Just have a look at what you think it is and let me know what you think about Code Geass. Let me know down below in those comments. And if you've liked this video, then hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, as well as that cheeky notification bell to be notified when more videos drop. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.